are live, everybody. Let me just make sure everything is set right now. Just checking all the... All right. How's everybody doing? I know it's going to take a while for it to fill up in here. So if you guys are just now joining us, which I'm assuming you are, um, we just got done doing the basic skin tone on the private Patreon channel. Uh, I use that private Patreon channel, so uh, every week, the way my Patreon is going to be structured from here on out is I begin my stream with a private stream for my Patreon so that they can ask private questions. I can uh, answer questions about uh, really anything they, they care to ask, and we put aside an hour to maybe two hours for that, and then um, once we're done with that, then we switch over here to the public channel which is what we're on right now, and um, we kind of have fun. It's more of a paint party. I am going to, uh, I am recording this because this is part of an ongoing series that we are going to put together as uh, an, uh, a mermaid tutorial. And uh, so basically the way the tutorial is going to be structured is I continuously work on it, I explain the way that I, uh, you know, what I'm thinking about during live streams. I answer questions during live streams, both closed and public. And then also I work on it privately and then uh, voiceover for all of my thoughts um, after I'm done. Because a lot of the stuff that I'm doing right now, I'm making it up on the fly. So it's not like something I can um, describe to you as, as a, like a method or a technique. What I can do, however, is kind of explain my thought process as I go. So that's why we're going to do a voiceover for this tutorial. And this will be posted on Patreon when we're done. Um, we are going to go ahead and revamp the way the Patreon works. So if you guys are already members of Patreon, um, we are still going to put out tutorials just as promised, but um, we're going to uh, make it a little bit cheaper on everyone. Um, so I'll put details out on that maybe later this week or in a few days on how that structure is going to work. So nothing changes as far as content. It's just going to, we're just going to make it a little bit cheaper. Um, yeah, for reasons like this, you know, when I'm working on this mermaid and it takes me, you know, a month or whatever, two months to work on the mermaid and um, it keeps me from putting out smaller bits of content, um, I, I just want to make sure everybody's getting their money's worth. So... That's why we are going to structure it that way. And again, more details coming soon. And um, yeah, and yeah, so we'll, we'll just make a post about it when we get there. So um, let's say Dennis Scott said, what's up, Brian? How's your weekend? Weekend's pretty good so far. Um, not a lot's happening. We've been, uh, Alex is here. He's, um, he's, he, he's hanging out. He's laying on the couch right now, but um, we have a couch in our waiting room. People like to chill in there. But anyway, a Alex is our apprentice, so we've spent the week and uh, kind of helping him uh, learn how to use a tattoo machine and, and those different things, and that's what we've been doing this weekend. Um, yeah. I'm doing good, Dennis. How are you? we got two Dennises. All right. Well, um, I'm going to continue to work on this painting. We're working on the skin tones right now. Um, yeah, let me go ahead. I'm going to adjust the camera up a little bit. Yeah, do you want to do it? Here, I'm trying to get... Here, I'm going to help Alex frame the, video, frame the camera real quick. I'm trying to get mainly this much in there. So, the rest of her body. Hey, what's up, Brian? I need to go get my comfy chair. I'm in this not comfy chair right now. My comfy chair? Boom. How are you doing her face right now? Yeah, I'm working on pretty much from here all the way around to, the, to right here. So the face too. Did you get that? Oh, I got a lag here. Hey guys, I'm, we're just setting up the frame. Oh yeah, that's good. Cool. 
How's everybody doing? We've got 10 people. So I'm gonna just continue to work on this right now and see how everybody's doing. How's everybody else's weekend? What's everybody been up to? So for those of you just coming in, I'll wait for the room to fill up a little bit and I'll kind of repeat what I was talking about here, in, here earlier. Oh, it's funny. Everybody always asks, they, you know, when I tell them that I freehand everything, they always insist that I didn't freehand because I've got sharp edges. But uh, here I'm about to actually show you how I, uh, how I get those edges. I don't know if it's like an insult or it's a compliment when somebody insists that you're lying to them about something you're not lying about. But I have had people totally insist that I was lying. Granted, this isn't technically freehand because I'm using a, a pencil draft marks, but um, as far as my... Um, approach to it. It's a freehand approach. As, as in I'm using no masking techniques or anything like that. See how I'm kind of directing my paint into the piece that way? That way my overspray doesn't go that way at all? So today's live stream is going to be a little bit more mild. Um, so it's just us today. I know somebody was saying that they thought that uh, it would look muddy with the green undertones but it really doesn't at all. I guess it's one of those things like when you learn the rules, you can also learn to break them. Brian says, which Patreon cheer should you choose if you're going to change it? Why don't you hold on a bit and we're going to, I have to, we have to get it finalized, um, how we're going to change it. Uh, so uh, I can't tell you for certain yet. So um, yeah, just hang tight. We'll, we'll have that information soon. I know the, the, and again, for those of you just joining, the reason that we're going to change the Patreon tiers is just to keep me honest. I don't want to... Um, because the, the way we have it structured, I was, I'm supposed to put out a tutorial every month, and this tutorial is taking me so much more time that um, I don't want people to I, I don't I don't I don't want people to pay for it if they're not getting it every month. So once this one is finished, I'm gonna try to you know keep up with the schedule a little bit better. But again, the purpose of the Patreon page is so that I can give you guys some of those, uh, like, if there's anything you want specific, like more, 
like these these live streams they're kind of vague and but if there's one something you want to learn specifically like the one that I've already posted which if you just go get the basic tier which is the five dollar tier you have access to my full tutorial that is uh, the monochromatic tutorial which is exactly what I teach when I do my monochromatic classes and um, so that one's already up and ready to go and once this one's finished I'm just gonna keep cranking out videos so long as I can do it and um, I'll just keep adding to it. So it'll take some time to build kind of a catalog of tutorials, just like YouTube took a long time to build a catalog of tutorials. And um, yeah, we'll just keep building them as I go. And I'll, I'll take your suggestions. So if there's something that during these live streams that were kind of, uh, um, I find to be important based off your instant feedback, uh, I'll, I'll add it to a tutorial and do something more specific about it. Uh, Brian says you need help with these wicked colors. Well, I tell you what there is enough information already up because everything is still archived Brian um, Most of my like I have these things I do which are uh, Live Q&A's which are only for my top tier patrons um, and uh, And I wouldn't be heartbroken if you were a top tier patron just for a month so you can get all those Q&A's and then you knocked it back down if you got what you needed Um but uh, yeah, if you go back in the archives, I talk a lot about paint and how I tune my paint. And I actually don't use a lot of Wicked. I use mostly uh, illustration colors, but this same things that I talk about are relevant with Wicked. They're just easier with illustration colors, uh, certain illustration techniques, especially what I'm doing right now. But yeah, there, Probably I would say the number one topic that people ask me during the live Q&A's is about paint and how do that how do I get it to spray right and you guys will watch me on these videos you'll see me fight my paint so it's not like I have it perfect all the time the main thing is to be able to to manipulate your paint at will you know like if something's not spraying right know exactly what's going on and you can manipulate it and get it to work for you um, you know right out of the gate without a lot of effort you know or thought for that matter. If you guys are here with us today, go ahead and give us some comments. Um, let us know you're here. Say what's up. Uh, if you have any questions about anything or if you have something you want to talk about. Kind of depend on you guys for uh, stuff to keep on talking about. I know we usually, we, we like to talk about the beers and everything that we're drinking, and I'm not drinking beer today, so it kind of like limits my conversation. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, Nate, no, you didn't miss the stream, but if you wanted to get more details, I did do a uh, more detailed stream on the colors that I chose on the Patreon page earlier, right before this one started. Yeah, Brian, Wicked Colors are really great. Um... I use Wicked Colors for most things, uh, like some of my bigger paintings, if like if you're working on t-shirts or you're working on canvas or you're working on wall murals or anything like that, I definitely would recommend the Wicked Colors. Or if you're working on paper or, or anything like that. I reserve my illustration colors for when I'm working on uh, sheet metal panels. And when I'm doing fine details, you, uh, I'm probably at the end of this, maybe going to bring out some Wicked Colors to do because Wicked Colors have, have some of those really strong pigments. So um, you can get some of those really bright colors and stuff like that.
So I think I'm going to go to Dallas probably um, next week. I think I'm going to Dallas to do some tattoos. Um, is anyone where, where should I go visit? I need to do some uh, conventions maybe later this year. I was wondering if any of you guys wanted to get tattooed. Or if you want to come to Florida and get tattooed, I'd love to tattoo some of my um, some of my friends here online. Yeah, the q and A's still up if you want to watch it. Yeah, sorry about that. I do the Q&As every Sunday at 6 uh, Eastern time. And then, um, yeah, and we do some on Friday as well. Yeah, the Q&A was actually empty for the first time. There wasn't anyone hanging out with us today. So I just painted and, and, and talked about my paint process. Usually there's at least four or five people in there hanging out, but not today. But if you do want to catch me on a Q&A, just have your questions ready to go. And um, Sunday's at 6, well, 6 my time, which is uh, Eastern time. Um, I'll, I'll answer any question you have. I always have a panel ready to go that's blank. So if there's something specific you want me to talk about, I'll put this away and talk about it on that panel. That's kind of what the Q&As are for. They're definitely like you all are, control, are in control of the Q&A or, or what I talk about or what I paint. Nate wants to know how much I charge for a tattoo. Uh, I charge per tattoo, and I definitely never talk about it <laughs> openly. But I'm not that expensive right now. I'm actually doing some pretty decent prices. Uh, after the um, yeah, the COVID thing, um, it kind of humbled us all as artists, and we kind of come down on prices a bit uh, just because the COVID hit us so hard. We weren't allowed to tattoo at all for you know two months or whatever, and kind of had we we all took a pretty heavy hit all of us tattoo artists and i'm sure everyone did around the around the world around the country but brush strokes you said you're down for a trip to florida of course you want to cover up no think of <laughs> You want to cover up. Cover ups are so difficult because you're working with a, a canvas. I'm willing to do it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not bowing out of it. But you, you got everything's already been worked. So it's hard to like really show off when you're doing a cover up piece. Yeah, yeah. So the misconception. So Alex is a, a learning right now. He's our apprentice. The misconception when it comes to tattoos and a cover up is it's not actually a cover up. It's not like paint. You're not. Um, you're not putting ink on top of ink and it lives on top of it like like you do with paint on a wall it's actually you're mixing the paint in it if you think of your skin as a vessel that holds ink when you add ink to it you're just mixing it so imagine having your paint in this mix cup and then you want to add another color on top well that color is going to contaminate with the other one and so really what you're doing it's more of a blending so a cover-up should be more like labeled as a blend out so you're Technically, yes, you're covering it up, but all those colors blend together eventually, which is why when people do cover-ups and they come back later, well, they don't come back true to the color that was underneath. They're just mixed up in the same color. So the smarter way to go about a cover-up, if you're doing tattoos, is let's say if it comes back and it's more on the purple side, then you should choose that color, that purple, and blend out of it, disguise it. So anyway, Nate says he's still in lockdown. Man, that sucks. Yeah, all is good now. I mean, Florida's pretty well opened up, although I'm hearing a lot of bad news on the news saying that we have probably more cases than anyone else right now, but I don't know. I try not to focus on the negativity. There's a lot to be focused on right now. I say I try. I still get caught up in it like everyone else. Sometimes I'm the one bringing it up. I think I did today. Like, if I'm ever in, like, a public conversation and I'm the one that brings up all the negativity, I always feel like an asshole. It's like, did you hear what's happened in the news today? Womp, womp. Conversation goes south.
<laughs> Brushstroke says no one will do that uh, cover up. A lot of artists, man, I'm not going to lie, we're all afraid of cover ups, but I do have, um, I do have some experience enough to, um, I don't know, I can make it look better, but uh, it's hard to guarantee them. So Pete Dillon says he's going to bite the bullet and get a Micron. You concentrate on auto art. Well, I'll tell you, man, if I told you that a Micron wasn't worth it, I'd be lying. Um, I do get away with not using a Micron a lot. I'm using one today. And yes, they're a superior airbrush. They're awesome. It's kind of one of those things, though, that's like, if you can't do it with an Eclipse, then you can't fully appreciate a Micron. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I know that might sign, sound hard to um, understand, but like... You should be able to do things with an Eclipse. Everything with an Eclipse. The Micron just makes things easier. So it's not a crutch, in other words. It's not gonna... It's not gonna save your paintings, but it does, however, like once you have one, you're like, man, this thing's heaven, you know? I would always see, I still keep my Eclipse close. Because I break my Micron all the time. So, got my gold eclipse. Oh, yeah, I was supposed to call Homeboy about that. You know what? He did tell me he would uh, gold plate your airbrushes for you. So, if anyone wants one, just leave me your information. I'll try to pass it on. If you guys can remind me later, um, I'll see if I can share his information. I always forget to talk to him about that. This portrait is about a hundred times easier than all of this background stuff has been. And I'm still on the background stuff. I still got a lot to go. But just this short time that I've been working on the portrait today, it's like simple in comparison. And it's funny because most people think portraits are the hardest part, which might be true for a lot of people, but doing these organic shapes is definitely harder for me. So Faith is texting me wanting to know when we're going to be home to make dinner. I don't know. However, God, <laughs> what should I tell her? How long are we going to leave the stream tonight? Faith stayed home today. She's She hurt her foot um, when we were bike riding. We, we went over to Clearwater Beach. I don't know if I told this story before, but I kind of messed up. We Faith and I, uh, we rented these, um, uh, the... Uh, motorized bikes they're battery powered bicycles and there's a bike path right past our shop that goes all the way down through clearwater beach tampa bay up through tarpon springs and things like that and um, anyway we we're riding the bikes over to clearwater beach we had a great time and we were on our way back um faith was following pretty close to me and my friend's shirt that we had bought we got a shirt in clearwater like a, a, a souvenir shirt and it fell off the back of his bike so i quickly stopped to snatch up the shirt while we were moving, you know, just reach down and grab it while we were still going. And when I did that, Faith hit her brakes and uh, was trying to avoid me. And um, she was wearing flip-flops at the time, which she shouldn't have been, but we were at the beach. And uh, yeah, she messed up her foot pretty good. She kind of like rubbed the skin off the top of her foot. So she stayed home today because she's trying to stay off of it because she's having a hard time with the healing. 
it's it's fine. She's fine, but um, uh, yeah, I feel really bad about it. It was still a fun day, though. She was a trooper. She still got a good attitude. What paint am I using? Always using Createx Illustration colors. Always. So it's Createx Illustration colors right here. With um, I'm using 4030 as kind of a balancing clear. It kind of helps smooth things out so you get that really silky effect. And I've got it thinned out with uh, the high performance reducer. So I need to text Faith real quick. I'm gonna tell her we're gonna go a couple hours tonight. What's this brush strokes? The GSI Creos piece, was it PS771? A micron, but cheaper. <laughs> You're probably right. I just can't get off of my, um, I'm an Iwata guy through and through. Like I can't, I don't know. I, I, I'll, I'll die an Iwata guy unless they do something to uh, change my mind. But um, yeah, but yeah, if you guys want to try another airbrush, that's fine. They don't, I'm not sponsored by the way by Iwata. So when I tell you I'm an Iwata guy, it's honest. And in fact, I've never even tried a different airbrush. Well, I say that. I've, I've tried them. Like, I've had them in my hands and I've used them. But when you're so used to a certain design and how it fits in your hand, it kind of feels weird to have a different airbrush in your hand. I think half the shirts I own are Iwata shirts. Because every, every year I do the SEMA show. Well, I didn't last year, but I do the SEMA show every year, and um, they always give us shirts. Because we'll go and we'll do these live demos in front of everyone. Although I will say I kind of quit doing the live demos, uh, simply because there's so many people that want to get involved with it that I just assume let them. Like, I don't want to sit there and, you know, fight for my place on the wall to paint and all that. Plus, I have more fun, you know, running around, hanging out with friends. I, I love painting live. Like, I love doing it. It's just, I've already done it so much that it's time to give other people a chance to do it, and there's no sense in me doing it. Oh, we got Brazil in the house. Do I hate cleaning airbrushes? Um, I wouldn't say that I hate doing it because I do it so much, but I'm definitely lazy when it comes to cleaning airbrushes. That's for sure. Oh, I was sharing this on my um, Patreon page earlier, just before this. So, uh, as you guys know, I'm pretty good friends with Corey St. Clair, and uh, he also is, uh, he learned to tattoo under my mentor, um, Armando Saldana, which is uh, Mondo Chromatic on Instagram. Anyway, so Mondo has been learning to airbrush from Corey while also teaching Corey to tattoo, so they're trading lessons. And I didn't even know this for years. I don't know why I didn't know. But having a spray bottle of alcohol, especially when you're working with Createx paint, is one of the best ways to clean your airbrush at the end of the night and while you're still painting. I was always wiping out my cup with a rag and using reducer and all these things, and I would always get clogs in my airbrush. And um, anyway, I was talking about that with Mondo. I think we were actually on a live stream, and Mondo was watching me do it. And uh, he was like, dude, you need to start using a spray bottle of alcohol. That's how you do it. Corey told me that. And I was like, really? Never thought of that. And lo and behold, yes, keeping a spray bottle of alcohol is one of the best ways to keep your airbrush clean. 
Who'd have thunk it? Probably everybody but us. It's, it feels like common sense after, like, you know, I was like, how did I go so many years without knowing that? I don't know. And that actually isn't even my spray bottle of alcohol. I kind of stole it from one of our artists, Haley. She uses it for tattoos. And I was like, hey, I know where there's a spray bottle of alcohol. <laughs> I need to get one of my own now, come to think of it. So to hide all these pencil marks, I'm probably gonna have to do multiple layers. I, I, I usually don't use the pencil marks, um, but this piece was so full of chaos uh, that I did. A lot of times I just use a paper stencil or I just flat out freehand it. Yeah, whiskey's good. Dude, don't tip me. So I haven't, uh, so Faith and I haven't been drinking for uh, a week now because we're trying to do like a cleanse. And uh, yeah, I don't think I'm an alcoholic or anything, but it does sound good to have a drink every, every now and then. Like, ah, especially these breweries next to me, man. I know you guys have been hearing me talk about it, but they are so damn good. I think if you all did come to get a tattoo, uh, I think you'd enjoy just hanging out at the breweries and the beach, of course. This is where I can get really nerdy with it. There's some like, see if you guys can see that in frame. Probably not, but there's a, a lot of like water texture in her arm with like water droplets and whatnot. And uh, I'm gonna try to paint those. Let's see how I do. If I tried to do it right now in live stream, you guys would be so bored. Because you just watch me not move at all for the entire stream. Just like working on one spot. I, I have some paintings, if you guys go back in my like Instagram or whatever, where there's a lot of lace. So you'll see the black and white stuff where I, I, I've painted a lot of lace on um, like uh, bra tops and, and dresses and things like that. And a lot of people will ask me, how did I do the lace? Uh, well... I did it exactly like I'm doing right now. I just got in tight and started freehanding it. Little bitty bits at a time. It took a long time. Remember that was back when I was painting um, uh, for my dad. And I would lock myself in what we called the sunroom, which was this room that um, obviously it had a lot of big giant windows. And... Uh, 
I would stay in there for days and I'd pretty much not do anything else. And uh, I would do my paintings in kind of isolation. Like, I don't want to say that I'm self-taught because I'm definitely not because I, I learn from everywhere that I go and from different people that I meet. But I did a lot of my, like, I guess some of my breakthrough, like, moments were, um, were doing that in isolation, just where I, I would, like, eat, sleep, and breathe painting. And um, it's all I thought about. And so I was always, like trying to come up with new approaches and new techniques and um, new ways of achieving certain looks. Because I never was attracted to a lot of different people's look of their painting. Like I always like, I wanted to achieve this certain look that I had in my head and I hadn't seen it before. So I had to kind of, I had to kind of sit there in isolation and practice and kind of react to what was happening and come up with it that way. And then once I've once I came up with my technique, I I started to see it in other people's work and no, recognize that I you know it's funny like a lot of people come to the same conclusions um, even if they weren't influenced by each other you know I guess they call it parallel thinking but I think it's when everyone has the same problem it's common that they come up with the same solutions. Dennis wants to know how often you should wash your airbrush. Um, I think you're supposed to wash it every day, although I don't, but don't take my advice. Don't. I wash mine every... <sighs> Shit, sometimes I'll let it go like a month. You shouldn't do that. You should wash it every day after you're done. That's why it's better that you, like, sometimes I'll... See, I'll mix my paint in these little bottles, and I even have some of these bottles with more secure lids, like this one. So if I'm making custom colors, I try to save my paint anytime I can. That way you can wash your airbrush out completely. And that's how you preserve it. Although you can always bring your airbrush back if you let if you let the paint dry up in your airbrush, that's not the end of the world. It just means you got a big chore ahead of you of cleaning. It's gonna take a while. Um, uh, let's see. Createx has a product called Restorer. I think I have some somewhere. I don't know where it is, but um, Restore is something, it's a soak. So if your, air, if your paint is totally dried up in your airbrush, you can soak it in this product called uh, Restorer and it'll soften that up and, but, and uh, clean it out, but it's still a pain in the ass. Can I use carb cleaner? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I've never had anyone ask that, but yeah, maybe, I don't know. Like I said, I use a uh, restorer. You can also use lacquer thinner, but lacquer thinner, see the problem with using lacquer thinner to bring it back after it's been um, uh, dried up is that lacquer thinner also dries really quickly. So if you're using it to both break down your paint, it's also drying really fast. So it's drying it and breaking it down at the same time. So. Uh, the Restorer is better because it keeps it wet longer and it's got a little bit of a greasy texture to it. So um, it kind of lubricates it. So uh, if it was me and I had to bring back an airbrush that was totally screwed with paint, I would use the Restorer. <laughs> Carb cleaner. All right.
Yeah, he said carb cleaner might break down your seals. So will lacquer thinner. And so will restorer also. Yeah, take the seals out first. Um, sometimes what I'll do, if I really need to do a deep, deep cleaning, I'll get on um, coastairbrush.com and I'll buy all of my seals and replace all of them. So all the soft parts of your airbrush, just go ahead and buy them. All the O-rings and I can't remember what that piece is called, but there's this like, uh, I don't know what it's made of. It's a little white kind of plastic piece um, that's inside right here. And uh, it's the piece that keeps the paint from going back into the airbrush that way. And it helps the it helps seat the uh, the needle, it keeps it moving. Um, anyway, that you can definitely mess up if you soak it for too long. So I would buy all the soft parts and um, order those separately. Take your airbrush completely apart. Take all the soft parts out. Soak it, and then replace them. Which I've had to do many, 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 many times before. Right, so I'm going to do something that trips a lot of people out. I'm going to put white on top of everything. It'll start looking really weird. You'll be like, what? What are you doing? Don't worry, there's a method to the madness. Yeah, you probably should just overhaul it. It's fun, man. I I kind of think of it like you guys know in um, Full Metal Jacket when they're uh, doing the song "This Is My Gun" or whatever, and they're all taking their or even in Forrest Gump, they're taking their guns apart and putting them back together, and they're racing to see who could take their gun apart and put it back together and clean it fastest. Uh, I've kind of gotten that way with my airbrush. I can clean it and take it apart um, without thought. In fact, when I'm not live streaming and I'm painting, I'll I'll take this apart probably three, four times in a painting. Uh, well, until I started using alcohol. Alcohol actually cured me of that, but uh, yeah, I can take it apart without thought and clean it completely out. I don't even think about it. Like if it's not spraying right, I'm just automatically just doing it and then I, I'm back together and painting again before you know it. I learned to take my airbrushes apart like day one.
What's really going to be fun is once we get this thing to more of a finished state is really working on all these details like like the little water droplets and things like that. Oh, thank you, Mr. Tony. Yeah, Sam, you guys can see it a little bit there. Yeah. So if you guys are familiar with um, Steve Gibson does an approach that's the CMYK approach to uh, painting. Mine is actually similar in theory, but not at all structured the same. So I'm still shifting paint around and shifting colors around and building up values, but I don't use CMYK. I actually try to um, get the colors closer while I'm painting. Um, so I just use whatever colors are available to create the effect that I'm after and there's not really a, a, a solid structure to it. It's just kind of just like when you mix paint if any of you mix paint on the fly on your own um, you just kind of feel it and you move it around. I'll mix the paint actually on the canvas itself. Or in this place in this case the sheet metal. Thanks, Dennis. I actually build layer after layer after layer after layer. I don't really limit myself to like, um, uh, like how many layers. I just I just keep kind of kind of like an oil painting. I just keep moving it around till I hit somewhere something that I like.
Yeah, the CMYK. I, I don't know that it necessarily comes from T-shirt. I know T-shirt used to use it for screen printing. Yeah. Uh, also for just printing in general, CMYK is how your printer works. Yeah. But as far as breaking it down in those layers, yeah, it does. the T-shirt uh, screen printing used to use it. Um, again, I personally don't, but uh, I, I understand the concept and I do use the concepts, the idea. Uh, I, I know that Drew Blair even, um, and I, I can't quote his technique at all, but I know he does the same thing where he moves colors around. Uh, the thing that I do differently is I don't, um, I don't preserve my background. I, um, I just keep mixing as I go. So it's, it's similar in approach, but a little more chaotic maybe. Do I use stencils a lot? I don't use stencils at all. Oh, I did, I did do a pencil transfer, if that's what you mean. Um, but most of the time, like if I'm painting for myself and I don't have to do a demo on the computer or whatever, I usually freehand things. Hey, there ain't nothing wrong with pre-mixing your colors. I pre-mix my colors. Well, well I gonna, more so I mix as I go. I mix them in the cup and then I save them. Or I'll mix like a base color in the bottle, like like this color right here I made um, just as like kind of a base color and I'm gonna work all the other colors off of it. But I've definitely used the CMYK method before and I like it, I have no problem with it at all. I just, uh, it's it's more fun for practice for me, like for, uh, uh, for um, academic purposes. Like most of my techniques, they might be based in theory, but they become intuitive, so I don't really stick to uh, like a structure at all. And I think that's how it should always be. You learn, learn the rules and learn like a technique or a structure and then, and then manipulate it at will and do whatever you want with it. That was one thing that I had issue with with the way that some of the classes are, are, are structured is because classes teach people like, here's step one, here's step two, here's step three, here's step four. And my problem with that is it, uh, it causes people to not activate their brains where it's like people would be sitting around waiting for step two. It's like, you know, like, teacher, when, what do I do next? Instead of activating their brain and trying to... Um, uh, trying to make up their own version of the truth. And I like to structure my classes in a way that's kind of open-ended where I'll guide you through it and I'll take you through my thought process and I'll explain the theories that got me there. But I would really like for you to take all of that and, and mess with it and play with it and get dirty and see what happens. All right, Dylan. Have a good time. Um, I appreciate you uh, checking in. Now I'm going to switch over to, um, well, let me make sure I get all this color out of here. I don't want to waste it. This is what I call giving it a wash. It's kind of bringing everything down to the same tone. And then I'm gonna to use uh, white 
to bring things back up a little bit, which is going to be crazy to watch because it's it's very much against um, the rules. All right, Mr. Tony, have a good dinner. Yeah, I'm gonna get dinner here in a bit too. I gotta text Faith 30 minutes before, before I head home. But I'm gonna make sure I put in my time. To share with the masses. I think I'm gonna use the Bloodline skin tone. Yeah. So there's this Bloodline color called, uh, and it's such a great color. If you guys don't buy the whole Bloodline series, um, I definitely would recommend this 5036 Illustration uh, Dermatitis Tan. It is a fantastic color to use as your base color for uh, skin tones. Like you can make any skin tone based off of just this color by adding, um, other colors to it. I do recommend the entire Tim Gore color series, but um, uh, this one is one of my favorites. So is the, all of them are great. Like I, Tim Gore has a fantastic color set. Uh, what do you guys think about my crappy beard so far? I've never grown my beard out my entire life because it doesn't grow out at all. So I decided to just let it go and see what happens. <laughs> so everybody's gonna be laughing at me. But that's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm all right with it. This is like two and a half, three weeks worth. That's all I got. <laughs> all right, here we're going to use the alcohol spray bottle. Start with reducer. Actually, you know what? Yeah, reducer. Actually, I might need to add some white to this. Where's my white? It's over there on the shelf. I don't know, we'll see how this sprays real quick and I'll gauge it. Oh, I didn't realize this would be a good background piece. I need to put some like things here, don't I? Some decorative things. Yeah, this color might be a little too dark for what I'm doing right now, so I'm gonna add some white to it. Be right back. It's right behind me. <laughs> he says you you grow bigger stubble after the next day. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. So uh, we've always blamed it on my Native American blood. I don't know why I can't grow beard. 
That's all right. We'll see what happens. I'm 36 and I've never even tried it. I always do that. I go through spells where like I'll be all clean cut for a while and then next thing you know I'll grow my hair out real long and then everybody makes fun of me and then I'm like F all y'all. And then I, I don't know. I get bored, I guess, looking the same way. I, I, you know what's funny is like everybody likes it when I cut my hair all clean, but I don't like because I feel like, I don't know, I feel too clean cut. I like to look scruffy. You know, somebody told me one time when I was doing a video, I can't remember what I posted on, I think it was Facebook or something, I, when I had long hair, and the first comment was somebody telling me to cut my hair. I was like, who the fuck are you? Like, they didn't have anything to say about my airbrush work, they just wanted me to cut my hair. I'm like, whatever, dude. It was when my hair was real long. Oh yeah, this is a real nice color right here. So Faith actually doesn't like beards, and she told me she doesn't like beards every time I tell her I'm going to try to see if I can't grow a beard. And uh, she's like, I don't like beards. I don't know, she might have a good, she might be in luck because I can't do it anyway. So I guess every week you guys can tune in and see how, how my crappy beard evolves. Or maybe one day I'll, back to, I'll be back to clean cut again. Which, truthfully, might be the case. I'm going to see how long I can stand it. So has anybody been watching any cool podcasts or TV shows or anything like that we can talk about? I know for me, I've really been having fun with um, 
And it was off of you guys. One of you guys suggested it, and I really loved it. It was, uh, shoot, I can't remember the name of the show. It's a really, like, psychedelic cartoon made by the guys that made Adventure Time. What's that guy's name? Trussell? Duncan Trussell. What's up, David from Connecticut? What's that? David says, uh, small minds. <laughs> oh, well, thanks, David. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's weird. I, I spoke about this a few days ago, I think, but like... When I started doing uh, YouTube years ago, I didn't have any expectations whatsoever about it. Um, I just did it. But um, one thing I really didn't plan on or anticipate at all is people having opinions about stupid things. Like, I don't know. I felt like, I don't know how to explain it. Like if they say it, that my their opinion about my hair or, or something like that, I, I just thought that was so weird. And I'm already a self-conscious person anyway. And then people would also tell me opinions that they didn't need to, like, I don't know. I can't, I can't think of any examples right now, but there was definitely some comments people would leave that I would, I would be like, well, I don't know why you needed to say that, you know? That's definitely something you could have kept to yourself. I don't know. I don't look at other people's content or other people's video or po profile or Instagram and think, even if it's something, if I have a negative opinion about what somebody else is doing, that's their business. I don't need to go and spout off my bullshit to them. I, I, I never understood that. Like, like, I think you should do this instead of what I like. Or I have people say things like, even in the middle, they didn't know I was in the middle of something. So I would post like a progress video up or something or a progress photo. And then people would be like, hey, Ryan, usually you do a really good job, but not this time. I think you kind of missed it. And I'm like, what? Like, and it's like a, a sketch that I did. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I, it's weird. Like, I never think to say that to somebody. Like, like, like Corey, my favorite artist, you know, airbrush wise. And what am I going to say? Hey, Corey, I think you dropped the ball on this one. No, I'm not going to tell him that shit. That's it's a, such a who who thinks that. Sorry, I didn't mean to cuss before, guys. I, I'm trying not to. I don't want to be a... Uh, I, I assume some people might have some kids in the room, so I don't want to um, offend anyone. So I apologize. Oh, thanks, Dennis.
So my uh, my friends upstairs, they have an apartment upstairs, and they're they're building a uh, a cat tree. They found a little kitten outside of here um, a few weeks ago, and it was crying and scared and in a bush. And uh, they spent the night um, saving the kitten, basically. And uh, now they're I can hear them in the back. They're building a a giant cat tree for the cat. For the new kitty. Can't wait to go look at it when we're done. See how they're doing. So I used to not be much of a cat person, but then when I got with Faith, she used to always, I, I used to always see her, she'd, she'd be watching these cat videos all the time, and um, she'd follow cats on Instagram and stuff like that, and I remember thinking one day, I was just like, you know what, we gotta get you a cat, this is, I mean, she already had her cats back at home at her parents' house, but, no, well, a cat for her, you know, and uh, so we ended up getting her a Maine Coon. And then after that, she rescued a uh, uh, another cat uh, who we named Rocket. And uh, now I'm totally a cat person, like big time. <laughs> I never was before. I wasn't even that sensitive towards pets. But now I'm like super sensitive towards pets. It's funny. I never thought I would be one of those people that said silly things like, my cats are my kids, but I totally say that shit. I also get all sensitive to other people's cats. Maybe that's what people say. I've never had kids before, but that, maybe that's why you see people that are like get real sensitive towards kids because they have their own, you know, because I'm that way with cats. So like, <laughs> like whenever I see other cats, I'm like, oh, little kitty. But before that, I would never <laughs> care. I wouldn't have cared at all. I'm like, oh, it's a cat, whatever, it's a cat. You hear Alex over there, he's just giggling or something. What are you giggling at, dude? TikTok, man. TikTok? Faith has TikTok. That's what we do every night now. We watch TikToks, me and Faith. Well, Faith watches them, and then, of course, I have to know what the hell she's looking at. So I'm always like, what, what are you looking at? What are you laughing at? I'm usually watching YouTube videos, and uh, Faith is usually watching TikTok. I like to watch, like, before I go to bed, I like watching sciencey stuff. Get my brain all in wonder and things like that. And, you know, space stuff especially. And, like, last night, my, my thing I was doing is I was... <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ever done this. Uh, uh, well, maybe you haven't succeeded, but I've never succeeded. I always like to watch people explain Einstein's theory of relativity <laughs> and the idea of space-time in a way that I can understand. Because <laughs> it's like, I cannot wrap my head around it. Like, I kind of get it, but <laughs> I totally don't freaking get it. And so I'll, like, watch people, like... I'm looking for videos that's like, like the theory of relativity for dummies. <laughs> and I'm trying, I'm like, I'm like, you're going to understand this. And I cannot understand it. Like, I mean, I guess I get the basic premise, but that's what I was doing last night. It was, it was another attempt at trying to understand space time. <laughs> and it's like, like time moves slowly when you're moving faster or something. And, oh, and, and how gravity is, is like, it's not a pull of gravity. I don't know. I'm not even going to try to explain it. I was trying to half-ass understand it while I was going to bed last night, and Faith was watching TikToks. And uh, so while I'm trying to understand that, I'm also going like, I'm like, I'm also leaning over because 
What's the context of that? Because you hear somebody saying something fu- fucking goofy and funny. Sorry, I'm cussing again. I apologize. But yeah. Um, yeah, so that's what I, how I spend my nights. I will admit, though, even though I don't like laughing at them, those TikToks are pretty damn funny. I was thinking about maybe ta- starting a TikTok for the tattoo shop. Actually, guys, we're going to uh, stream maybe this week, maybe even tomorrow. I'll see how it goes, uh, me tattooing. We'll do a live stream of that. Uh, Dennis says, try PBS Space Time on YouTube if I like that kind of stuff. I will. I will. I was trying to fall down that rabbit hole. Do you understand it, Dennis? <laughs> like, the idea of space time? It's a fabric of space and time. I don't know. I get the concept. Like, when they drop a ball into, a, you know, a piece of fabric to show how orbits work. I mean, I understand that whole thing. But but in, in the idea of all of space, uh, it's, it's, yeah. Do you you don't understand it, Alex? All right, explain it. <laughs> Alex said I'm not ready for it yet. Right now I'm doing a lot of skin textures. I don't know if it's showing up on camera right there, but I'm doing these little minor skin textures. Whenever I do skin textures, I I don't like to make it literal in the sense that every little dot and pattern and pore is represented. I like to more represent it with texture, just kind of more painterly. So it's like, it's realism, but it isn't really real. It's, It's interpretive realism. Did I just make up a new term? Interpretive realism. What's that? No, I am. Alex said I'm not that special. I think I am. I think I just made up a new term. Call Webster's. Yeah. We need to put it in the academic books. You know, if tattoos ever become uh, a college course, I'm going to teach it, and I'm going to use the term in- interpretive realism. Did, I, think, I, I think that's what I said. Actually, this technique so far is looking pretty good. The textures, like I said, I don't know if it's showing up on camera that well, but in person it looks really nice.
Do I ever have issues with control using a gravity feed instead of a side feed for detail? No. In fact, I actually disagree with people that use... Now, I don't disagree as a whole. Like, I don't think they're wrong. I just think for me, personally, side feed airbrushes aren't good because if you'll notice, my airbrush is always to the side. And you can see how I hold it, right? Everything is always sideways. I'm never straight on. So I get my detail sideways. So if I had... A, a side feed cup on there, it would be dragging across my painting the whole time. And that's not good. So, uh, no, I actually prefer the uh, gravity feed. Don't really have much of an interest in the side feed ones. You guys can see I'm just building up these little minor textures in the skin right now with these little tiny little strokes. Little kind of just kind of like, I don't know, little squiggles of sorts. Dennis wants to know how long I'm going for. I'll go, I'll go for a while. I got 25 people in here. I'm still having a good time. Um, yeah, we'll just see. Again, for those of you watching, uh, the structure of these live streams is always going to be different. Um, some days you show up and we'll probably be having a paint party, you know, where everybody's, we're, we're drinking and having a good time and, you know, raising hell or whatever. And, and um, other times it'll be real relaxed like this one where it's just kind of watching me work at my own pace. I will say that when I'm doing the live streams, I do work at a little bit of a more hyper pace, like a, a faster pace. It's simply because I feel like I'm boring everybody if I were to sit here and do all the details like I normally do. Like, nor normally, I'll, I'll show you the pace I'm working at. Like, normally I'm like up in here and I'm doing every single pour and I have noise canceling headphones on. 
and I'm just like in a zone and I work very, very slow and I, I'm always calming myself down, trying to like control my thoughts and my breathing so that I don't get in a rush. And I, um, I kind of zone out if I can get my music going. But when I'm doing live streams, it's definitely more active. I'm moving a lot faster. I don't get too stuck in any one place. I just keep moving. There's some tattoo artists that I watch sometimes, they build really slowly. And uh, I know it can get like boring. Even if you're like super interested in what they're doing, you'll get bored with what you're watching just because it's kind of sleepy. So hopefully I'm not being that way. But I know when I'm doing fine details, there's almost no avoiding the sleepiness of it. Because it's very much a kind of a concentrated kind of Zen thing. I'm so far very, very happy with how the painting is going. So I'm not anxious at all or getting bored. I can still hear those guys upstairs hammering away at that cat tree. Building the fort for the kitty cat. Dennis says, squash the like button and squeeze the subscribe button. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, you guys squeeze the subscribe and squash the like button. <laughs> so what do you guys think when I'm done with this? I don't know. Well, we won't think about that right now. What I'm going to do with it when I'm done. I know I want to hang it. I feel like I want to keep it. I haven't spent this much time on a painting, I don't think, ever. Actually, I take that back. I did spend a very long time on a few of my old motorcycles. But as far as a fine art piece, I've never spent this much time on it. Granted, this isn't like my original design. This is based off of a, um, a photograph. Uh, by an artist that I'm, I'm sorry I can never recur, re, re, recall her name off the top of my head but um, uh, she did give me permission though to paint from her uh, from her uh, photographs And as I said before in a few of the other streams, I actually intend on taking my own photo references after this, especially if this goes really well, you know, then um, I would love to be more of a fine art type of person rather than just simply, you know, doing motorcycles or whatever. I don't think I'll ever really take on commissions or anything like that. 
but I'd love to just do some paintings and sell them or do whatever with them. I know Mondo right now is working on a hula girl. So if when he finishes that one, if we finish at the same time, or whenever we both finish, I'd like to maybe even display them together. That'd be fun. Since they have a similar theme. Ocean theme. Ocean pinup. Oh yeah, this painting's, I'm already feeling it. I like what's happening, I like it. It's been a while since I did colors, so it's a lot of fun to play with. <laughs> he says I make it look easy. <laughs> well, I mean, when you, it is easy when you, when you when you practice it, it does start to become easy with time but every time things get to be too easy i try to complicate it so that it's uh, a little more not so easy i guess because right now like i said i'm not really sticking to any um structure at all there's no there's no real theory behind what i'm doing it's just kind of letting letting things happen and and, and reacting to it It's funny when I when I did all those paintings in the past where uh, I posted them up on YouTube, with, uh, you know, little tutorials involved. Um, I don't know that everybody really knew how much time or effort really went into each one. I think that's interesting to show, especially with these live streams where you guys can see in real time uh, my pace. I never never valued speed over quality. Never. Still don't today. So every time somebody was giving me advice on how I could work faster, I would turn it off. I didn't care for it. Just because I, I, I value quality over speed for sure. Even if that made me go broke, which it kind of did, but that's fine. Well, not broke. I mean, I still made money, but I could have made a lot more if I valued sp speed over, um, not necessarily over quality, but if I was more interested in speed. I guess I should say. I mean, speed definitely has its place. It's just not where I am mentally.
Speaking on Dennis saying that I make it look easy. I think making something look easy is a symptom of, of practice and hard work and dedication. Like if you're really putting in the effort to um, master something, I think uh, making it look easy is a, a part of that. Because I think at a certain point it should be easy to you if you're if you're if you're working hard enough. So Colton wants to know, how long does my average painting take? Um, it depends on the painting. So a portrait, like uh, the one that's up on my Patreon page, or like um, just my typical like fully realistic flat, uh, monochromatic portraits, those usually take about three days of work, which is about eight to maybe nine hours a day, give or take. But I think if you were to actually put it into time, it's probably about 13 actual hours of pulling the trigger. Um, that's for a portrait, but I've definitely done some portraits where I'm faster, like memorial portraits, I try to get them done faster, um, simply because they're usually under a deadline of some sort. Um, but something like this, I don't know because I won't know till I'm done. Um, Let's see what else. Um, I think 30 hours is a good long time to work on something. Like if it's something you really care about working on and you want to put in the effort, I think 30 hours is an allowable amount of time. You see you guys how I'm building up the light tones first? A lot of people are in a real big hurry to get to their dark tones. And that's somehow, sometimes what, what's your downfall. I think that's a lot of people's downfall. They're too much in a hurry.
Did y'all finish your cat tree? They've come down to get tools to build the cat tree. I've been I've been letting everybody online know updates about your cat tree. <laughs> <laughs> This is looking nice. Uh, Dennis wants to know what I'm painting on. This is a uh, an airbrush panel from coastairbrush.com. Uh, you can buy it there. It's just a metal sh panel that's been, uh, I think, powder coated with uh, black on one side and white on the other. It's an 18 by 24, I believe. Man, this is looking good. This is fun. This is so fun. Do you guys do that? Do you guys get excited about your paintings like I do, where you're halfway through and you're like, mm, that's looking good. I'm having a good time. Hopefully I don't mess it up. Ah, you can't mess it up. No mess ups. <laughs> Dennis says, 21 likes. Got the champagne going. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, Lone Wolf wants to know if I'm a tattooer. Also, I am definitely a tattooer. In fact, I am in my tattoo studio right now. Um, we have a tattoo studio, studio in Florida. And that's where we work and live and play and all that good stuff. And right now, I am actually, I have my tattoo station right behind me. And then we've got two tattoo stations over there. Our friend just walked through. She's, uh, she's one of our tattooers. They're building a cat, cat, whatever, uh, cat tree. We, we kind of create kind of a, a live, work, play kind of environment here. Fonzie says he just returned a cat tree, finished building it, and the cat wanted nothing to do with it. What? Wait, is the cat's claws clipped? Sometimes that can do with it, but man, my cats can't get enough of their cat tree. So Dennis says I should make a book with airbrushing tips and tricks. Man, I'm making a live stream with airbrush, airbrush tip and, tips and tricks. I don't really have like... Um, tricks per se i just have my methods you know and my thoughts and that's why i do the youtube channel and that's why i do a patreon 
is so I can share my thoughts and my ideas and my processes and uh, let you guys take and do with it what you want. I, I, like I said, I don't really have a, a, a structure or anything like that. I just have I just have my experiences and the way that I think. And I, that's what's, what's good about these live streams is I can uh, talk to you guys in real time and tell you exactly what's on my mind and why I make the decisions that I make, artistically speaking, and um, let you all, like, use it how you want to use it. If you like it, if you want to borrow my ideas, borrow my ideas or whatever, you know, hopefully that helps you. Or if you just want to hang out and kick it. Like I said, uh, maybe in a week or so when we're done with our, um, with our uh, 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 what do you call it, the, the cleanse we're doing, maybe we'll have another uh, hangout and we'll all drink some beer and I'll, you know, you know, have a good time. Invite you guys virtually to hang out with us and you know, have a little party. Like I said, as I have some friends that are going to visit at some point, and when they do, I'll invite them to the party. We had my buddy Brady here last week. Um, he wasn't doing much art with us, but he was definitely hanging out and having a good time with us. Uh, Lone Wolf says, tips and tricks are Fra Frazier's gig. Yeah, I let Frazier stick to the tips and tricks. And he's a good friend of mine, too. So uh, that's his bag, you know? Ryan does the art. Hey, Frazier does the art too. Yeah, I just, I, I, I like I, I, I'm I, people have always said that I'm really good about uh, explaining things, I guess, or putting things into certain contexts. And I think that's my gift, and that's probably what why I think these live streams are good. Um, because I can just kind of take you through my thoughts. Uh, again, I do these live streams on Patreon, which are a little more thorough and uh, direct, but um, whereas these public ones are, you know, more loose. But, uh, yeah, that's how I kind of like to handle it. And hopefully I influence somebody in a positive way. Or at least entertain them. So I'm thinking I might go to SEMA this year. I don't know. We'll see how things work out. But hopefully I'll see you guys if you go out there. Is anybody going to SEMA? Comment whoop, whoop, whoop. No, that's stupid. <laughs> Just say what's up if you're going to SEMA. <laughs> My brother has a podcast. That's his like catchphrase. <laughs> What pressure am I using? I don't know. I know I stay around 22 to 25. Let me look. Give you an accurate. Uh, yep, exactly there. I'm about 22 PSI. <clears throat> and I'm using a, a, a silent air compressor. The brand is actually called Silent Air. And I put this thing through shit. I mean, cr sorry. Put this thing through the ringer. 
and it's probably going to kick the bucket on me soon enough because I've driven with it in the back of my truck several times and knocked it over and had oil spill everywhere. Who's been my biggest influences and why? Hmm, na 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 na. Well, it's no secret that Corey St. Clair has been a very big influence on me. Um, one of my best friends, uh, Mondo Saldana, Art by Mondo or uh, Mondo Chromatic on Instagram is a huge influence. Um, let's see. Uh, I think Javier Soto has been a big inspiration. I don't, I'm not sure how much he's influenced me artistically, but as far as just uh, admiring his work a lot. Um, there's a lot of tattoo guys. Uh, Carlos, uh, uh, shoot, his last name just ran out of my brain. There's a guy named Sergio Sanchez who's a tattooer who's amazing to me. Uh, he's about, um, I don't know why Carlos, Carlos Torres, Carlos Torres is, uh, who also I think works with Sergio Ch Sanchez. Both of those guys have been a huge influence on me. Um, and let's see, um, a lot of different artists, photographers influence me a lot. Um, I really admire uh, the artist Gearbox, who's a good friend of mine. I, I wouldn't say artistically speaking, I've been influenced by him a lot, but uh, just his dedication to his art and his enthusiasm for his art has been uh, very inspiring to me. Um, uh, and the way that in his big, his large murals are really neat. Um, and again, he's a good friend of mine, so I've had an opportunity to talk and hang out with him quite a bit. Um, let's see. Um, I think Norman Rockwell is an amazing artist, and I, I really love the way that he's able to capture expressions. And uh, you know, one thing about Norman Rockwell that I think is absolutely amazing, and I, and I am nowhere near that level and I hope to be one day is how not only does he capture somebody's likeness or somebody's caricature but he tells an entire story with just one image one very simple image if you think about it he doesn't even need a lot of background a lot of times yet he tells the entire story with movement and sound and smells and everything involved with just one painting and so Norman Rockwell is very very huge for me um I think uh of course, Da Vinci and Michelangelo and all the you know all the old masters. But um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a good one. I, I I think I just go through different influences. Of course, Craig Fraser. He was my original influence. Um, yeah, he was a big influence on me. Uh, yeah, I've got a lot of influences. I I take influences from everyone all the time. I never. Never turn myself off when it comes to being influenced by somebody. I always, 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 um, I'm, a, I'm an open book to different ideas. But of course my dad, yeah, my dad, my dad also, like, if it's not for him and my mom. So when I was very young, my dad would draw with us at the table. And that's how I ever, that's how I learned I could draw at all. He was teaching me how to draw Batman. Um, when I was two years old, I think I was, if I remember, I, I mean, I actually do remember this for some reason. I, I must have been older than two because I was old enough to hold a pencil, but not old enough to go to kindergarten or anything like that. Um, but I remember my dad sitting with me and my brother at the kitchen table and uh, we drew Batman together. And that was the first time I ever remember drawing anything at all. And I remember my dad was teaching me how to smear the pencil on the paper and um I was hooked. Like I don't, I don't have another identity. Like I've been in love with drawing ever since then. Like I've never veered away from it. I don't, I don't think of anything else. Uh, I mean, I mean uh, as far as my identity is concerned, like I'm an artist. I've always been an artist. I've always, I always draw, and I've never spent that time. You know, you get a lot of people that say, you know, they drew a lot and they got away from it and they didn't draw for several years. I've never was that person. In fact. I kind of get down on myself sometimes because I think I should be practicing more. I should be doing more drills. Like there's artists that can draw out of their heads like cartoonists and things like that. And um, I get really jealous because I, I feel like I should be better at things like that, like cartooning and that, that sort of things. But I, I tend to have a gift for um, 
realism, even though I would say my passion is more towards cartooning. It's just I've always gravitated towards realism because it was a natural um, flow for me. I just kind of, I just kind of fell into that. I didn't make an. I, I don't think I ever consciously made an effort to be a realism artist. I just kept getting closer and closer until that's what I became. And now that I'm a, I guess you would call a full blown realism artist. Um, I think. I think I want to go back to being more of a, a an illustrative artist or like more, you know, think about Norman Rockwell, how he was able to merge both cartooning and realism together in such a beautiful way. And um, I think that's something I want to try to work towards. Bob Ross for Nate. Yes, Bob Ross was definitely, I mean, who isn't? <laughs> who isn't influenced by Bob Ross? I'm still, I'm, I, I'm not big on landscapes myself. Um, I admire them, but... Uh, Painting them, I, I've never been a fan of actually painting them. I don't, I don't like the activity of painting landscapes, but I do like the art of painting landscapes. You know, one of my earliest influences, which is kind of funny because I don't know how that comes into play today, but um, um, Vincent Van Gogh, for whatever reason, when I was younger, was my favorite artist. He was the one that I admired the most. In fact, I was thinking about that just today, how like when you grow up, somebody said something about creativity. I was watching a TED talk about creativity, and they said that everyone is creative. Everyone's born creative in one way or another, whether it be with dance or storytelling or art or whatever the case might be but as you get older and you learn you start becoming more of a literal person and you start putting creativity to the side and replacing it with something more i guess adult or or, or you know once you learn how things are supposed to work then you kind of replace that creative wonder with whatever's correct and i think that's what he was saying and and, and it got me thinking like about the things I was interested in when I was a kid and what happened and am I still interested in those things? Like I remember there was a book called Incognito Mosquito when I was a kid. It was a children's book that I really, really loved. It was about a, a mosquito that was a detective and I really liked the artwork in it. Like I really liked looking at, I, I loved that there was this mosquito in a trench coat that was a detective. I thought it was neat and interesting and I loved the Ninja Turtles and stuff like that. But then when I got older, I started gravitating towards portraits and liking things that are more realistic. And I was think when I was watching the TED Talk, I was thinking I was like what happened to that person that's in that was that really loved reading a book like Incognito Mosquito and what would you do if you tried to replace some of your um I don't know, adult sense of, of realism with, with wonder and, and, and things like that. So that's something I might play with in the future. Like, what if I did my own adult version of the incognito mosquito? What would a, what would a mosquito dressed in a trench coat who's a detective look like with all of my new, like, I don't know, grown-up influences? I don't know, something to think about. But I was thinking about that just the other day watching a TED Talk. Maybe, no, that was last night, actually, I was watching that. I, I really, really, really am interested in getting back into things that are creative in the actual sense of the word, word creative. Like, again, I get on these, like, YouTube rants where I'll watch, like, underwater, um, like, just the bioluminescent species that are in the deep ocean and how incredibly insane they look and how like we we up here we always kind of see things in simple shapes that are familiar but look at just what's happening here on earth with all the creatures under the ocean and how interesting they all are and it's like man look how much more you could go into creative like what if you took influences from just the bioluminescence like what if my next mermaid painting 
was actually a bioluminescent deep sea mermaid. Because what's imagine if, if mermaids really existed and we've never seen them before, wouldn't that mean that they do live in the deep ocean? And if they did li live in the deep ocean, well, then they would likely be bioluminescent and transparent. And what would that look like? And uh, that was something I was thinking about just recently. And it's like, think outside the box a little bit and uh, take influences from elsewhere. But it's something I've been thinking about. I mean, that would make sense even with the mermaid lore, if you think about it, because the, uh, the lore is, isn't that the mermaid would um, coax a sailor out of their ship or a shipwrecked sailor and drag, drag them down to the bottom of the ocean, which means if they're dragging them down to the bottom of the ocean, then they are a deep sea creature. So that's interesting. Maybe I'll, I'll, um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll go deeper into that. Maybe that'll be my next mermaid painting. Dennis says, have I ever painted what's on my mind? Um, organically, I don't think so. Um, I always try to pull influences. I, I've, I have a hard time just drawing straight from my head. And when I do, I usually just end up drawing a face. And the face is never really that realistic looking. It's usually kind of a warped looking comic book character. Um, I don't ever share those drawings that I do. I just kind of draw them, I doodle them, and I throw them away. Oh, Dustin with the super chat. Thank you so much. At the dive in. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Dustin says, where do mermaids see a movie? At the dive in. Thank you so much. <laughs> We've got the dad jokes going today. <laughs> Dude, we need to have Brady back over again so we can get the dad jokes going. When we were done with that stream last week, Brady was like, he's like, I'm sorry, did I, <laughs> did I throw things off? Was I, was I making things weird or whatever? I'm like, nah, man, it was cool, man. We're just hanging out. You can say whatever you want. All right, it's cool. I'm like, dude, Brady, it's cool. <laughs> All right, I, I okay, so a part of me wants to like, okay, I'm gonna show you guys the next layer real quick. Like I, I know I need to kill the stream soon, but I really wanna get into the next layer, so I'm gonna do that real quick. Take my alcohol, spray it out, my new lesson. Almost looks like it dries it up. I don't know. I'm still gonna dip a rag in there and clean it out. All right. It's 
So normally I would kill the stream right about now, but I really want to explore this next layer. I feel like the alcohol didn't do it any favors that time, but we'll see. Probably because I had the 4030 in there. All right, well, it's fine. All right. If a mermaid was a real thing, what would it take to be one? Stay hidden, rescue sailors, etc. Magic, camo. I know if it was a real thing and we still hadn't discovered it, it it must live at the bottom of the ocean. But what would it want with the sailors, though? Maybe that's why they're half human. They're stealing something from us for their camouflage. Maybe that's what they are. Maybe they are a fully camouflaged fish. And the shapeshifters. So they disguise themselves as women. Humans. But they're really these bioluminescent creatures. Empty canvas. Like an octopus. Can change their skin texture and shape. Do I still draw or sketch a lot? Yes, I do, quite a bit actually. Oh, Mike says that's what he's saying, draw that. Oh, I will. In fact, I've been, that's been on my, in fact, just today actually, or was it, no, it was yesterday, I actually pulled out my pencils and everything to draw that. But then we had a walk-in come in, uh, a tattoo, a tattoo uh, walk-in, and I, I had to do the tattoo.
Uh, Mike wants to know if I did tanks for brass ball cycles. Yes, I did. I did uh, this film the war style one, a black and gray one. Um, I did quite a bit actually for brass balls. I did one for Toby Keith through them. Um, yeah, I did quite a bit for them. Back in Oklahoma. So now I'm building some of the undertones. I'm using red, uh, so it's more red than the actual end undertone will be, but I'm gonna tint that later. It kind of, all these layers show through and they really do a lot for it. Mike says, a girl with a red, with a cowboy hat and a revolver. Yeah, that girl was actually my girlfriend. That's Faith on that bike. That was the Toby Keith one. Later, dude. No, I'm about done. We're about to call it here in a bit. Guys, we got about... Uh, I'll go till 9.30 here, which is uh, Eastern time. So we've got nine minutes. I'm not really going to bed. I'm going to go home and eat some dinner, which I'm super excited about. Easy, welcome. You're late to the party, bro. <laughs> I know. You tell me, you, if I find the part two to that painting, I had no idea that I never posted that part two. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'll, if I ever find that, it's on a hard drive somewhere, I know that. But if I ever find the part two, I will post it. I definitely filmed it. I know that for sure. If you guys knew how much stuff I filmed for YouTube and never posted, a lot. Oh, hell of a lot. Imagine all this stuff, like if we weren't live streaming that I probably wouldn't post because we're just kind of fooling around, you know. I posted, a, I, I filmed a lot of stuff for YouTube.
Oh, easy. Had to work. Cool. Cool enough. We've been working too. My trigger's sticking, I need to oil it. You said uh, people don't really buy instructional videos or DVDs anymore. Yeah, I know. They don't. I mean, why would you? Everything's on YouTube. That's why the Patreon is good. Like, you guys see me. I'm sharing everything that I have with you. Um, and then the Patreon is, is more personalized. But... Um, Really, the Patreon for me, it's you guys showing support because we really can't make money sharing our information anymore. Not that I ever really did. Uh, I always kind of shared my information for free. But when you share your information for free, a lot of times it gets to where it takes a backseat because you can't. if you can't make money doing it, then other things become more important. And when those things like become more important, then the people that expect you to uh, create content get upset with you and they're like, what, what happened to you? You know, you were supposed to, you know, do part two or, or you know, whatever. And um, the truth is, is life got in front of it because we do it for free. It's just like any hobby, you know, sometimes the hobby has to take a back seat to real life. Um, well, thank you, Brian. And, and again, guys, if you guys, you know, with the Super Chats and with the uh, Patreon subscriptions, really what those really are is it's just letting me know and letting me have that accountability, really. Like, if you guys are paying me, like, whether it be through tips or, or whatever, it, it, it keeps me accountable to sharing, you know? So if something comes up, like, for instance, tonight, I actually uh, was asked to do a tattoo and I told, the, I told them I'd do it tomorrow instead because I needed to live stream for you guys tonight because I want to keep up with my schedule. And um, that's why when you go to the, my Patreon page, it, it keeps me honest. It keeps me, um, I can't say, uh, you know, well, I got to let those guys go tonight because, you know, I need to make money. Instead, I'm like, no, those guys are paying me. They look forward to me doing this and I share everything with them. And it keeps me accountable. So that's what you guys are really paying for when you do the 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 lives when you do the Patreon and, and when you super chat and things like that. So I thank you very much, and I really am thankful to be able to do this for you guys. Um, I'm thankful that anyone even cares that I paint pictures at all. Um, so I I, I I thank you so much for watching and, and and supporting. And I'm hoping that I can create artwork for you guys that that uh, that you really appreciate because I work very hard for my artwork. And honestly, when I was growing up painting and, and all these things, I never really envisioned that anyone would care about anything that I did, art artistically speaking. And the fact that they do care, and you all care, uh, means a lot to me. And uh, I thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it. But I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream now. I got to get home. My girlfriend's waiting for me. And uh, thank you guys for joining We'll see you next time. I'll be here Sunday, and we might even do a, a, a tattoo live stream this week, possibly. And maybe even another one in between, because I do need to keep working on this. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.